Now, now, let me, Brad, this is an interesting story tying you into this, because when does the call for you, and how does the call for you come to go into Ozzy's band? Because everyone knows you played with Ozzy, Speak, speak of the Devil record, you did that album, and you were in there for a while. You did as, the whole right. tour, yeah. But, yeah, but, but the, as far as an album is concerned, that's the album you're on, but you, you were the guy well, after Randy Rhodes for the most part. Yeah, basically what, what happened was we did the demo, we sent the demo out trying to get a record deal, but we the didn't want The Night wanna, Ranger demo. Night yeah. Ranger yeah. demo. But we didn't want to, we were called Ranger then, and we didn't want to play... And real quick, I'm sorry, before you go, what songs were on the demo again? The original uh, demo? Oh, Sing Me Away, Sister Don't Tell Christian, Me You Love Me, Don't Tell Me You Love uh, Me, you know, da, da, those da, kind da, of uh, uh, Anything that never Show play up. Rock, no, um, um, can't, can't find, find me a thrill. thrill. Yeah, yeah. So Some, everything eventually showed up on records. Yeah, uh, mainly the first record. Maybe one for, or two. Uh, one song did. Except, except for, for Sister Christian. Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which right. is fascinating. Yeah. But so since we really didn't play out much, we didn't have a following. We didn't want to go on and play stupid little clubs, you know, for no money. You know, we just wanted to get that record deal. So basically, I started a band called the Alameda All Stars because I just wanted to play. And we were playing the local circuit in the Bay Area, doing four shows a week. Kelly was in the band for a while. Covers? We did, did covers. We did All whatever covers, we yeah. wanted, but it was a cool, it was a hard rocking band. And we were doing a couple Aussie tunes. So basically, uh, uh, I remember going to see Randy uh, play with Ozzy at the Day on the Green in Oakland, California, and he was being touted as the next Eddie Van Halen. So I went there with a bunch of buddies of mine and saw him play, and was like, wow, this guy's great. You know? So that's when we started playing some of the Ozzy tunes with the Alameda All-Stars. So basically, I'm cruising down the road uh, early March, and middle of March, and uh, I hear on the radio there was a plane crash, and Randy Rhodes is, just died in a plane crash and i freaked out and i pulled over in my truck and i went i just saw this guy play man unbelievable unbelievable and then somehow you know just me being a you know punk kid i'm thinking God, wonder who they're gonna replace him with you know wow that's the gig of the century you know to be able to do that right and uh Went back and I started playing with the All-Stars, played that dude that weekend, played a couple shows. And this guy came in named Preston Thrall. Preston Thrall's Pat Thrall's brother. Pat Thrall played with the Pat Travers band, yada, yada, yada. Tommy Aldridge on drums. Tommy was playing with Ozzy. Okay, figure that one out. Anyway, so... <laughs> I got they, the lineage. I, I okay, yeah. okay. Then, uh, so basically, that was a Friday night. And he says, I'm going to call Pat. And Pat can call Sharon... And try to get you the gig. Preston told me, and I guess, yeah, sure. I go, everybody in the because world. Because initially, immediately, Bernie Torme was there. Right. They needed right. someone Some to work. They needed right. someone to get in there, and he really didn't fit the bill. He was more of a Hendrix style player. Right. Uh, but he was just going through the motions. Right. So I remember, I'll never forget, it was a, on, that was Friday night, and then on, I played a Saturday night with the All Stars, and I took this chick home on Saturday night. Got all fucked up, partied all night with her. <laughs> you know, it was an 80s thing to do, right? <laughs> Eight o'clock in the morning, I get my, my phone rings, and this is lady going, Hello, Bradley. This is Sharon Arden, Ozzy Osbourne's manager. We'd like to fly you to New York for an audition. I'm like, Who is this? <laughs> it's Sharon. I'll put Ozzy on the phone. I said, Yeah, put Ozzy on the phone. Now, my dad was a pilot. My dad flew all over the world, and when he'd be on the East Coast and he'd call home, there'd be back in the 80s, there was a delay in the yeah, phone. Yeah, sure. Slight delay. And I and Ozzy goes, hello, Bradley. <laughs> and I go, yeah, right. But I heard that delay. He goes, this is Ozzy. I want you to get a pen and a piece of paper and write down these songs to learn. And I heard the delay. And I turned white. I freaked out. I looked at the chick laying in bed. I said, <laughs> I said get out of here. I go, I go, I go, I go. I got, I got, this is serious business. That was the only right? time he's ever kicked a yeah. chick out of his bed. And so <laughs> while she was getting dressed and I was checking her out, uh, I spanked her on the ass. And then, uh, Set her on I got to go join Ozzy now. Get yeah. out of here. Yeah. See you later, love. <laughs> so basically, awesome. I wrote down the 18 songs and, and I had friends with albums and I had one of the albums. And, and uh, they gave you 18 songs. 18 songs to learn. Wow. In two days. Uh, that was a Sunday. So it's a full and I learned set, on basically. Sunday. Yeah. yeah, the whole set. And then Monday and then Tuesday I flew to New York. One-way ticket. And the funny thing is I, I flew to New York. One-way. scared. <laughs> One-way ticket. I'm a scared kid. No credit card. I had $150 in my pocket. Flew to the uh, New York. This limo guy picks me up. I said, yo, tell me about this gig. He goes, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a limo driver. You know. So he takes me to the Helmsley Palace, and I check in. I go, yeah, room under Brad Gillis. He goes, they were playing Madison Square Gardens with Bernie Torme that night. They go, sorry, we don't have a reservation for you. And it's like midnight. And I go, you're kidding. 
this is 1982. Well, how much is the room? They said $135. So I gave him $135. I had $15 in my pocket. And I went up and sat in my room. It's like, okay, what now? And I get a call at like 1 o'clock in the morning from Larry McDini, the road manager, saying, come on up, boss. He wants to meet you, all right? So this is, you know, I go up and I walk in the door and I, I go, Larry, I go, Larry, there are no reservation. I just had to, you know, uh, uh, pay for my room. And he goes, gives me five $100 bills. Does this work? I go, <laughs> Okay. Right. And he goes, Come on, I want you to meet Ozzy. So you better know, be I careful. Went, Sharon might come after you for that uh, yeah. three fifty yeah, balance. Extra 350 balance. I, I, I had to pay back with interest off the first week. I'm sure you okay. do. But uh long story sh- longer. Anyway, so basically Ozzy goes, Go get your guitar. So I went and got my guitar and I go, I don't have an amp. He goes, I don't care, you know, go get your guitar. So you know, we're in this big huge suite, all these people doing press and everything. We walked up this big thing to the the, the penthouse and the, uh, the suite the bedroom and uh closes the door and he sits down i'm sitting on the bed with just my guitar and he sits down and crosses his legs and looks up and goes what do you want to play i go let's do flying eye again because i was doing with the all-stars so i start playing and he's going oh no it's looking up at me singing I'm like, okay right so i play flying eye did the solo he jumps and goes bradley i love you pull me through and i'm like okay okay and he opens the door of the suite upstairs looking down at like 50 people all this press people and goes i got a new guitar player so when I walked downstairs, everybody hit me, you know, like, who are you? Where are you come from? And I didn't have a story. I was with Rubicon or whatever. And then, uh, then I I'm the up... Alameda All-Stars. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> but I had to learn the song. They gave me a cassette and an app. And uh, wow. uh, uh, I'd, learned, I'd go on the road and watch Bernie play every night and sit at the soundboard watching it. And I was just amazed by the castle and everything going on, you know, just blown away basically and for four days i sat in my room and learned the stuff watched the show every night and toured with them drove after the show and on the fifth day i did a sound check only did seven out of the 18 songs and ozzy didn't even show up for that then i played my first show in binghamton new york that night sold out and and i screwed up on revelation mother earth and and uh caught myself goes to the fast part in the middle i caught myself and stopped and and the end of the night, and you know, everyone goes oh you did great you did great and the next night sharon goes up she goes bradley you're doing great but tonight don't screw up. You know. <laughs> so, there's well, my story. I, I think that's, that's a great yeah. story. Yeah. I, I think you did a, a phenomenal job in that role. But bringing it back to Night Ranger, what I think is even more incredible is the fact that you left the gig, essentially, if I'm not mistaken, to go back to Night Ranger. Is, well, is here's that... the deal with that. You know, we tour went all over the world and I tell you, I have my brothers back home that I spent two years with trying to get a record deal with and we were all, you know, we were all hanging out. We were all brothers, you know? And, you know, with Ozzy, you know, you had, you know, uh, Rudy, the, the Cuban and, and you know, like the English guys and, and, and Tommy, the Texan and I really didn't relate to these guys that much. You know, I'm a California guy, you know? And, 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 and uh, so right towards the end, Rudy got the deal with uh, Quiet Riot right. to get a record deal, so he quit the band, and that's Ooh. when things started kind of really going downhill. You know, he quit mm-hmm. the band. That was a big scene with Ozzy. In fact, big scene with Ozzy, and uh, so then you know the record company came back with the stipulation they they would cite Night Ranger if I came back to the band because of my fame with Ozzy. And I tell you, man, at that point I was just frustrated with the whole touring with these guys with Ozzy and everything. It was tough. It was real. It was, it was a tough year. And so I quit the band, came back. We had finished Dawn Patrol. We just mixed Speak of the Devil with Ozzy. And I come back with Night Ranger, and they released both records the same week of the second week of October 82. Wow. I had two records and Album Network. You remember Album Network, yeah, sure. right? Trade they had paper, the bottom, yeah. the, the two picks of the week. I was the two picks of the week with, with Dawn Patrol and, uh, Speak, of and Speak of the Devil. And I was the first one to ever have two picks of the weeks, you know, on the yeah. same records. So that was, you know. And it wasn't um, – he didn't – you didn't have a bad falling out with Ozzy when you I quit. Didn't. Yeah, yours, yours was fine because Oz, Ozzy and Sharon came down while we were finishing – while we were cutting the Dawn Patrol album. After you had played with them and doing everything, Ozzy and Sharon would come out and hang – they come, on, hung came, out they come and hang, hung out with us and the tour was while over. we were doing the Dawn Patrol you know. record. 
You Were know? you guys worried, Jack and Kelly, with him doing Ozzy and getting the fame he, he Dude, got? We, were you worried that you were going to lose him? Kelly oh, and I, sure. they, they were doing one of those King Biscuit flower hours, and you were doing it live Memphis. from like Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis, Tennessee, or something like that. And, and so we're all listening to it. And Kelly and I, that night, we, like, we got together to listen to it. And, man, we heard that whole concert. And Brad sounded so freaking good playing that whole thing. We it was like, unbelievable. There's just the no, one guitar. Gone. It's Brad. We're like, we looked at each other. We said, that's it. He's Kelly's gone. like, it's gone. You know, Kelly's... You know, Kelly's Mr. Fatalistic. He's like, it's done. It's over. It's done. We're done. We're done. I left we're my toast. car keys. I quit. I quit. It's done. I left my car keys at Jack's house, so I had to join the band. I quit. Wow, that's an am- that's amazing, amazing. And thankfully, I mean, thankfully, Night Ranger would go and become successful. Yeah, Otherwise, well, he would millions oh, around. Otherwise, that would have been he would have chosen. <laughs> he would have chosen. Your, I would have been your roadie. Yeah. Then. <laughs> He would have chosen poorly. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes. that, 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 but then we came to we, then the Aussie tour. We came to Oakland Coliseum, right? We were in Sacramento the night before, and Kelly and Jeff and Jack and yeah, they all came all down, and all my friends came down to, to hang out and watch me play, which I was really excited about. You know, I'm playing my hometown, right? And after the Sacramento show, we're driving to Oakland, and Sharon comes up to me. She goes, "Bradley, I got some bad news." So what's that? She goes, "Oakland's canceled." canceled i go why she goes every every show was sold out every show was over overly sold out she goes lack of ticket sales and she walked away and i just you know that feeling like oh my hometown canceled lack of ticket sales she took about 10 steps and turned around and said just kidding sold out in three hours <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> wow that's amazing She's like psych <laughs> well, it's uh, it's remarkable, and I, I go back, you know, reminiscing about these early days, seeing the band and seeing all the great shows that, that you guys did. I remember seeing you live so many times, and to see the success, people always talk about Sister